Season Zero! Hey everybody, sometimes amazing things happen, like uh, running into the director and star of I Am A Knife Of Legs, this guy. Here I am, waiting for death. You're listening to BBC World News. Rock superstar Benet has cancelled his upcoming international tour because a fatwa has been issued calling for his death. Benet, any idea why this person is demanding you be killed? I don't know, man. It might have something to do with my song. Our religion is stupid, especially yours. So how did I get here? Um, a long time ago, in a galaxy pretty much this one. A friend of mine said, hey, we're doing a party. We need you to do an act. Can you throw something together? And I said, all right, I'll throw it together like a Euro band. <laughs> and I put together this, this really ridiculous band called Pathetique. Um, and I was the lead singer. My girlfriend was Baguette, played keyboard and, and so forth. And it was just a bunch of gags and silly songs. Baguette and I, in real life, broke up. And I took the act solo and started doing a um, character named Benet, just doing the solo songs, guitar jokes sort of thing. And a couple years back, I decided to turn it into a movie. I grew up in a small village in Europe. My father was a shoelace repairman. Then one year, monk shoes came back in style and he had to sell me into human trafficking. Being human trafficked became routine. I wanted to change. I decided to become an international pop star. All right, what's the easiest way to do this? I'll keep it in my apartment. I'll cast my friends, keep costs down. If there are any scenes that I can't shoot, I'll just draw them and have a really basic animation. I'll write all the music. I'll just keep it all in-house so that I'm not waiting around for anybody to finish anything. So a one-man band. One-man band thing. And uh, I kind of threw everything, a lot of my stand-up into it. So the monologues that Benet is saying are right out of my live act. And just sort of used that and pieced it together with a very simple plot. And you have a history of uh, doing stand-up? Some stand-up, a lot of improv. And I do a lot of impressions as well. Do some impressions. Um, All right. uh, This is Alec Baldwin being interviewed here in Montreal. I love this place. What a great town! You know, I was walking around Montreal and nobody recognized me. That's a nice thing for Alec Baldwin. Because usually when the paparazzi come near me, I stab them in the eye with a fork. Here's Alec Baldwin. <laughs> okay, do another one, that's fun. Harrison Ford, um, my leg is fine. The papers kind of exaggerated it. What I did was I got a splinter because they made the Millennium Falcon out of wood. (laughs) (laughs) All right, do you have any more, though? Because it's fun. Um, I got uh, William H. Macy. Okay. (laughs) David Mamet allowed me to fly up to Montreal briefly, but but only for a couple of days. He only lets me out of the house for short periods of time, and then he puts me back in a cage, but I owe him my career. I understand you are hiding in a safe house at present. Yeah, it's not so bad. There's a pretty good Vietnamese restaurant on Sunset around the corner right across from the Tropico. It's a comedy, but it really is about a guy who's truly grieving over loss. You know, someone once said that grief is like a spiral. I think it's like a spiral notebook. It kind of finds comedy in somebody who won't get over something. And the whole notion of getting over something that you don't just get over. Maybe if you tell me a very painful story, it will get my mind off my own problem. So tell me your trauma dote. I just made up a word. I combined trauma and anecdote, and I combined them into a new word, never been said before. It's my humor. It makes me laugh, and I didn't uh, sort of tailor it to a broad audience. So I think the people who do like it are really going to like it a lot. And the people who don't, um, well, God have mercy on them. <laughs> Death is close. Oh, it's look, stun juice. Side effects include change of hair color, facial hair changes. Oh my God, it's for me! You got the apple! Uh, there's one scene in the movie, a master shot. I and the other main character were watching TV, and a cat, my neighbor's cat, walked right into the master shot. And when I saw the footage right after the take, I was like, we gotta write a scene for that cat because now the cat is in the apartment. So I wrote an entire scene where I'm talking to the cat, a whole monologue, and that led to another scene where I returned to the cat to the neighbor. And it's something I never could have written without that cat walking in. Three scenes are really great. And the cat died not long after the shooting. And it's this, a great tribute to this really nice cat. Maybe we ought to start working on a strategy. What's our strategy? Well, let's see. The assassin is going to be highly trained and dangerous. 
So we're gonna need a good strategy. Like what? Like you run. So the title, I'm a knife with legs, uh, sort of came out of a, um, I was just brainstorming about some gags and uh, Benet, my character, has to prepare for this assassin arrival. And I thought about his, the manager saying, kind of like Bruce Lee telling a young martial arts student, it's like, you've got to prepare for this fight. You've got to become like, like a knife with legs <laughs> that can fly, that has a cat, and then there's, you've got shields on your leg, and it goes on and on and on, and it became a song, this sort of ridiculous sort of analogy for preparation. And that became the title track, and then it became the title of the movie. I'll be a knife with legs who can also fly. Oh, n nerdy, um, I, I bought Richie Rich comics as a kid before I got into Marvel. <laughs> uh, this is Bennett Jones, and you are watching Season Zero. Yeah.